Hello friends, this video on digestion and absorption part 13 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. We will now talk about the most important organ for uh, the digestion of food that is small intestine. So let us see what is small intestine, where is it located and what does it do. So the, till now we saw that the food reached the stomach, right? Now the food started its journey from mouth. In the oral cavity, a little bit of digestion happened with salivary amylase. Then it went down through the esophagus, it went to the stomach. In stomach, partial digestion took place and as a result, a partially digested chyme was formed. Now this chyme then passes on from stomach to the small intestine through the pyloric sphincter. You remember the valve which, are, which is present between stomach and small intestine. So now the job of small intestine is to completely digest this partially digested food. So that is the task of small intestine. And now we will see how it does that. Now if you talk about the structure of small intestine, it is a highly coiled narrow tube. So here you can magnify it. This part is the small intestine, the orange color structure which you see. So if you can see it is like it is something like this, a tube like structure which is highly coiled like this. So that is why it gives an appearance of this sort. So it is a tube like structure, the straight tube like how it was in case of esophagus, a similar tube but very too much coiled. So that forms the small intestine. Complete digestion happens here and that is why it is a very important part of the digestive system and not only digestion but also absorption of nutrients take place here. So you see it is like a two in one organ. So first it will completely digest the food. So once the food is completely digested, so it will get converted into the simplest form and those simplest form are absorbable by the body. So the absorption of nutrients from the food will also take place in the small intestine. So let us talk about the structure of small intestine. It is the longest part of the digestive system. However, it doesn't appear to so. That's because it is coiled. Now, if you have, it is something like this. If you have a, a wire in this form, you put it, keep it straight. You can actually feel that, okay, this is this long. But if you take the same length of the wire, but you keep it like this, you coil it. So maybe it will just occupy this much of space. So it will look short, but actually it is quite long. So similar is the case with the small intestine. So since it is coiled, so we do not get to see how long it is, but actually it is the longest part of the digestive system. Now, you might ask another interesting thing that if it is the longest part, then why is it called small intestine? Is that a misnomer? No, well, uh, it is not a misnomer. It is called small intestine because the tube, the width of the tube is very less. That is, it is a very narrow tube and that is why it is called small intestine. The thickness is very small. Small intestine is divided into three parts that is duodenum, jejunum and ileum. So these are the three parts of the small intestine. So let us quickly see each of these. Duodenum is a U-shaped structure. So this portion is duodenum. So that is the first part of the small intestine. So the food from the stomach reaches the duodenum part of small intestine. And if you look at the uh, structure here, it is a U-shaped structure. So this is the shortest region of the small intestine, somewhere around uh, maybe some 10 inches in length. So that's all, is the length of duodenum. Hepatopancreatic duct opens here. You remember I was talking about the liver and the pancreas. So all the bile from the liver, gallbladder and all the pancreatic juice from the pancreas, they all come through their respective ducts and their ducts combine to form the hepatopancreatic duct. As you can see here, this is the bile duct, common bile duct and this is the hepatopancreatic duct. And all of them join together and they open in the duodenum. So they give their secretion to the duodenum. Jejunum is the long coiled middle portion. So this portion is jejunum, the middle portion of the intestine. 
and it is the primary site of absorption now since duodenum is the place where all the enzymes are uh, enzymes reach as well as the food reach so the food meets enzymes at duodenum how enzymes because the hepatopancreatic duct opens here so therefore the digestive activity or the digestion part is done in the duodenum section whereas in the jejunum absorption take place now this jejunum is quite long and it is about 3 feet in length. So just compare it, it was only 10 inches and this is 3 feet. And now the terminal part of the small intestine that is ileum and it is a highly coiled structure. It is extremely coiled and it is the final section of the small intestine. So after this it opens into the large intestine. So if you see here this part is the ileum that is the last part of the small intestine and finally this is the place where it opens into the large intestine. So this green colored structure which you see that is large intestine and the small intestine meets the large intestine through the ileum section. So these are the three parts of uh, the small intestine. Now what happens? Okay, digestion happens in duodenum, absorption happens in jejunum. So what happens in ileum? Now the absorption which happens in jejunum is not complete. Partial absorption takes place in jejunum and in ileum the leftover absorption gets completed. So complete absorption takes place in ileum. So that is about the structure of small intestine. Now before we discuss how the digestion and absorption takes place inside small intestine, we will quickly discuss about the lining of the alimentary canal. That is, we, we see that all the organs or all the parts which together form the alimentary canal, their epithelium is multi-layered. That is, there are multiple layers of epithelium. So we will quickly discuss those multiple layers of epithelium which is which lines the entire alimentary canal starting from mouth till the anus. Now wall of the digestive tract or the alimentary canal has four layers of tissues. Okay, so what are those four layers? Serosa, muscularis, submucosa and mucosa. So these are the four layers of uh, tissues which are present throughout the alimentary canal. So let us look at the four layers of tissues. The first one is serosa, which is the outermost layer. And it is nothing but a thin mesothelium. So the serosa is going to be the outermost layer. So it, it is nothing but the layer which surrounds the intestine. So from outside whatever layer you see that is nothing but serosa. Next is muscularis and muscularis is that layer which is responsible for all kind of muscular movements which we have been talking about. So whenever we were talking about peristalsis, we said that some contraction of muscles. So where were those muscles coming from? They were coming from this layer, muscularis and it is made up of smooth muscles. Now this in turn has two layers. The layer muscularis is made, arranged in two layers. One is a circular layer. And another one is longitudinal layer. So here you have a longitudinal layer, layer and a circular layer. So this is the circular layer and this is the longitudinal layer. So these are the muscular layer that is smooth muscles and these muscles uh, there are several layers of these smooth muscle tissue. So these muscles contracts and uh, moves the intestine and this movement of the intestine also helps to move the food down the intestine. The third layer is submucosa which is formed of loose connective tissues like blood, lymph vessels or nerves. So this is submucosa. And inside that, the innermost layer is mucosa. So we have been talking about the innermost layer quite a few times till now. For example, in stomach, we said that the innermost layer contains the gastric glands. So the innermost layer is the mucosal layer. So this pink colored structure which you see here, that is mucosa, which is the innermost layer of epithelial tissues. And in most of the organs, this mucosa is specialized for you know, performing different functions and it is also specialized to for absorption of nutrients from chyme in case of small intestine. So these are the 
four layers of the alimentary canal and these four layers are present in all the organs when you, whether you talk about the esophagus or you talk about the stomach or a small intestine or large intestine so everywhere you see these four layers now why I discussed this is when, when we will be talking about the absorption or by small intestine then we will talk about all these layers so that time it will be easy for you. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.